Okay, so we've taken the axle carrier assembly off the rack in the shop and brought it over to our workbench. At this point, we're going to take the soft jaws off the vise and mount the axle carrier in the vise. Make sure that it isn't going to fall out as we work on this. Mount the dial indicator onto the flange of the axle carrier housing and have the dial indicator read 90 degrees to the radius on the drive side of one tooth of the bevel gear. To get a better view of this, we'll take a look. We can see that we're creating a so near 90 degree angle as possible, measuring on the drive side of the tooth. What we then want to do is check the clearance between the pinion and bevel gear. We do this initially to make sure we get a reading of what that clearance is. If we're going to reuse the pinion and bevel gear, we need to return that pinion and bevel gear back in service to the same backlash reading to prevent abnormal wear, failure of a gear tooth, or accelerated wear. So now that we have the dial indicator set, we're ready to measure the backlash. We're going to do that by moving the bevel gear just slightly, but we want to hear it bottom out or take up that clearance. So we want to hear the click click or the clunk clunk sound. We don't want the bevel gear to rotate as we do this more than just the clearance. So that sound is a good indicator. What we can do is zero the dial indicator as we've done here and that'll help us get an easier or more accurate reading. But even if you don't do that, you're simply measuring the total distance traveled from one stop to the other and that's your backlash measurement. So in this case, we're reading 0, 8, 0, 8, 0, 8. We're getting a very consistent reading, which tells us that our backlash is 8 thou, and that's going to be the spec that we're going to use when we reassemble this axle carrier assembly is 8 thousandths of an inch.